not me, was it? All right, I'm Colin. This is Shine Automotive. That's Sam. And today we are reviewing and installing the Atoto F7 Double Din head unit. So what we'll do now is we'll just do a bit of pawn and we'll get it unopened and Sam will talk through a few of its features. You want to wish you could open this box, bro. I wish I could. Yeah? Yeah. No, no, all right, mate, you crack on. So what we've got inside, buddy? A microphone, obviously for your hands free. Has this got Apple CarPlay then? That's the standard fitting on the back of the stereo. When you're purchasing this in the stereo, you have the options to enter your vehicle regs in. They have a good customer basis where they can set you out with the right install bit that you need. If it's a generic thing, they'll be quite plug and play, but they do offer a feature if you have to manually wire it and install it. Some bits of trim. Nice bits of trim. Let's have a look at the bits of trim then. So that's obviously the trim, the final surround. You've obviously got two sizes compared to what size you need. <coughs> the plastic actually feels quite good and sturdy. So I'm giving a good flex <coughs> on it there. Okay. Sam's favorite part, the destruction book. Some instructions now to fit it into your dashboard there. It has CarPlay, warranty instructions and getting started. A good booklet there to get read through. Panel operation, cable connections and installation. System operation manual. Ooh. And a manual blur there, that one. <laughs> the same, isn't it? The operation yeah. manual, that's obviously in a different language, which helps out. Emmanuel, I think that would be French. Yeah. So if the bearded mechanics are watching, they'll tell us, bonjour. Bits of fitting kit there, very nice. And then the eight auto unit itself. Seven inch screen, is that? Seven inch, yeah. Whoa. You get much pleasure out of doing that. No, I'd have preferred the little. Did you love the piece on the screen, Harry? No. No? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's the screen. USB, SD, aux. That'll be your external USB to plug your phone into to get your car player. That actually feels. What, the button quality? Yeah, it's not quality, right? That does. I can see you, look. <laughs> scared myself. So on the back you've got all your powers, your auxiliaries, antenna for your radio and your auxiliaries for your reversing cameras and I think it has an input for a front camera as well. Your fuse should be on what we're going to fit, basically plug and play. But I'm quite impressed with the quality and how it feels. So the next thing we do is go and fit it. But before that, we'll open the reverse camera and just have a quick look at that. So the camper that we're fitting it, you know, we need a long lead. So there's the lead to run to the back of the vehicle and all the way to the front of the unit. And we should have a nice little Maybe camera. That. And a nice little camera there. That feels, wait, I don't think, it's not a plastic housing anyway. Mm -hmm. That feels like it's in an aluminium casing nice little camera nice little bracket point so we can get that tucked under the vehicle what we'll do now is we'll just chuck everything back in the box we'll head over to the vehicle and we'll show you what we're fitting it on and if you've watched previous episodes you know what camper we've been working on so this is the unit that we're going to get fitted in let's go fit it in the camper or the breadford camper as it's known right so we're in the camper, the old Bradford camper that we're converting. So this is the retrofit dashboard that we did in the last one. So Sam made the wooden unit there with some auxiliary chargers in there and fitted these clocks. Put all new modern clocks in that you get off the marine boats. So that has finished the dash off really nice. Got a bit of trim to put in there and the head unit that we're going to start installing now. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to run the reverse camera. So we're going to go through the back of the stereo, down through the floor and then down through the chassis leg oh underneath this floor and then out the back of the camper so we'll jump on and get the lead put in now i won't put it on the time lapse because it's going to be actually quite hard to do i might try and get squeezed under to show but i'm not too sure yet so we'll get on and we'll put the reversing camera we've got in. the lane here so you need that have you side. just tied that in knots i haven't tied nothing in knots not ideal it's plenty long enough mm -hmm. Send that through. We've got obviously the, the engine luckily on this because this has been converted into a Peugeot engine. So we've got the, the cover here that lifts off, which is to give us good access to the wiring loom that's just behind here. It runs straight to the back for the backlights. So I will cable tie that all the way along underneath the chassis and Sam can just set it up there. That's been quite easy for us to do on this application. And we can just get the wire fed through to the back of where the unit is where Sam's retrofitted the seven inch hole and I shall go on my back. I put a piece of cardboard on it. Go underneath with some cable on it. Go all the way to the back of the vehicle. I'm not looking forward to it. So it looks like I can't fit. Should I start from the back first? 
and work forward so then we can hide. If you look under the back, there's plenty of nothing under so there. there's more room to hide the excess mm -hmm. at the back. So that's what I'll do, so I'll jump onto that now. Do you need to sit? I know. Well, it's comfy under here. Hello! Will it squash you if I stand in here for a minute? Just go in. Oh. Yeah, don't rock too much. Fitting this on a car would be easy because we could have it on the two post ramp. Obviously, we've been a camper, can't get it in the garage. There's always an excuse for you, this is the problem. You're getting out alright? That's it. So with our front, as we've built the hole, it's extremely tight. So the fitting kit, with it being a retrofit thing, we're not going to use a fitting kit that comes in the Atoto pack. Luckily, our vehicle is just a normal ISO plug. So that's been fine for us to do. We've got the microphone in place. We've just put a little hole in the top of the dash and just fed that through. We've got all this room as well for us to tidy up the wires, which is good in our installation for the reverse camera that we've fed in. So she's gonna join them two up and then literally all we have to do do is plug it into the back of the unit, plug the reversing camera in and that wire, and then we're good to go. Sam's skilled wiring job's going on here now. These are a heat shrink crimps that we have, which are fantastic. I'll actually put a link down below where you can get the heat shrink from using our affiliate link, which helps us out loads. And you can't get a better seal than that. That's perfect for what you need. Oh, look at that, twisty, twisty. I'm literally plug in, plug in, in the microphone. They all feel good, don't they? They plug in well, don't they? Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is just a bit the ancient aerial. Whether that'll work, we don't know. So, best thing to do is before we fit it all in, just make sure she fires up. Ignition on, funky clocks. Booting up now. And there we go. And I'm just going to move it around. In all fairness, the glare on it's pretty good. See what Sam will take it round that side. Got a bit of glare from the window there. From my position up high, you can still see it pretty well. And the glare over to this side. I can see Sam in it. Smile, Sam. Yeah. But yeah, the display for the price is pretty good. So in the description down below as well, we've got the affiliate link where you can go and buy this unit from. We'll just have a look around it now and go through some of the features it's got. And she's fitted in well now and it looks it looks proper awesome on the dashboard, the old retro. So the features it's got is your reversing camera that we've put in, so I'll put it into reverse. So is it gonna work? And there we go, there's the reverse camera. Go and see if it works, run out by the camera. Go right up to it. <laughs> Do us a funny face. <laughs> Perfect view and the quality is pretty good as well. So for a 720 30 frames per second camera it's pretty good and the and the screen the screen's pretty good in all fairness for the price. Obviously in the last episode when we were doing the camper, Sam had built these speaker boxes and the tweeters and in the speaker box we've got the crossovers as well. Very nice. And the speaker nicely fitted. Ignore the carpet, that's just temporary. And the nice speaker box that he built there. Really good. So let's see what the sound quality is like then, Sam. Okay, you found it, man. I found the right one. Just seek. So he's tuned into Radio One as always. So for the game on Sunday, it's their first time texted in. Which is and not Martin playing. Beck to be in touch and say, Morning, Katie. Yeah. We're doing the NC 500 in Scotland in our That's good enough. We can't play that too much, though, but at least we're playing no music. And then home. So, I've been just been messing around quick with the graphics equaliser. I can't press, can't have it up because obviously we'll get demonetized. But it's amazing. The stuff you can do, even if you're fading, if you just want to fade. So, even when you fade, you know, sometimes you, you have to press all this. But what you can do is just grab the centre of the vehicle, you see the little dot, and then you can adjust it wherever you need to, to fade it. I just think that's really, really good. And I tell you what, the buttons feel really good. Can you just turn that on? And that's gone, look. Oh, so you've got the, what you can do is there as well. 
if you want to peep in Tom on someone. You can just leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you want to, yeah, if you, if you need to like that, back to your home. So it has Apple CarPlay, which also will need to be connected through the lead there. And then your Andro, and Andro, Android, so it's capable with both. You've got your Bluetooth, so you can also use your phone. You can have your phone, so if you want to dial somebody and ring, Obviously connected to your phone, not connected. We'll work out and we'll see how it is to pair the phone next. USB. Night mode. Night mode, light, mode, yeah. Yeah. Full light. Yeah, really good. I'm shocked at the Apple CarPlay. The last one of these we fitted was £700. What was that? The Sony one. We so the Sony one we fitted for a customer, £700. £700. And it doesn't do a lot more than what that does. But for the money yeah. and the application, do you need to spend all that money? Definitely not when you can buy this at a quarter of the price. You've got your micro SD card, so if you've got a front-facing camera and you want to record your footage like a dash cam, you know, to save you having a dash cam, and dash cam, some dash cams cost actually more than this unit. On the auxiliary side, you plug your phone in just that way in your aux, your mic, micro SD card, you've got an external USB port as well. And you've actually got two microphones, believe it or not. Yeah, and there's an inbuilt microphone there, and there's the external one that we've put on. I'm really, really impressed with this bit of kit. The functions of what you can do is brilliant. You've got your settings, you go all, all through your settings, Bluetooth settings, everything like that you can see on the screen now. Then you've got languages, you know, everything. It's got loads. Of and this is capable to adapt to steering wheel control. So you could actually see some wiring you could, buttons. So if you, if you had an application, obviously we're in a 1983 Bedford, but if you had application to, 1982, Sam's just correcting me. I was born in 1983. So if you've got your steering wheel application, basically you've got your wiring harness that you can splice into and as if well. You use this custom one. This is for if your voice control built into your So hey, so, everything yeah. would work. So for the money, it's brilliant. You've got all the screens, your settings, AV in, equalizer, your phone, your settings. The touch screen is really good. I like the little sound when you, you press. Put anything into it. If you had a DVD portable DVD player, straight in the back, it's anything like that. Yeah. You can play your Xbox on if you really wanted to. Sam's just setting the settings there now, which is easy to do in the time of day in the settings. It's 11.16 a.m. There we go. And then save that. You're just back out. Yeah. Right, and then that's saved. Steering wheel position on the left or the right. That's that's good though, isn't it? The functions that it's got is really good. So we'll have a go and see how easy it is to pair with the phone now. Just going to pair now. Yeah, Sam is calling me. Hey, that's my number. You can't have that on there. <laughs> Sam's calling me and I just realised my number's popped up on the screen. So I can't move. For whatever application, also we went for a square surround, but they do all the different applications for every vehicle that you want. Obviously, we've gone, we've gone for the retro sort of square look to tie in with, with that vehicle. I just love them clocks. And Sam's just got it set up now, so it's connecting to the Apple CarPlay. And she's got it connected to Apple CarPlay. It took seconds to do. In all fairness, starting route to Shell. Right, so we're starting our route to Proceed Shell. Proceed to St James Green, then turn right. Right, there we go. So, Apple CarPlay is connected. All the instructions are quite easy to go through. Are you hiding? Look at you hiding. Smile. It's a straightforward bit of kit to use and install. I'm impressed with it. I'm giving you an honest review. You spend seven and eight hundred pounds on a Sony one, or do you spend one that's less than two hundred dollars, hundred and fifty quid UK pounds roughly, that has all the bells and whistles for a fraction of the price. Pressing on something like this, security-wise, it's an old vehicle. It's not very hard to steal. And break into it. I'd rather them take a unit at that price that does exactly the same as the Sony. I suggest to go buy one. If you buy one in our affiliate link, it really helps us out. I've been Colin. Yes, I know you have. <laughs> I've been Sam. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to, su don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Bye now. Falling over. <laughs>